Now, regardless of where you go, that would be the symbol of a... So it eliminated the confusion. But when they took us away from pictographs, what we also refer to as hieroglyphs, and took it down into scripts, whether it was heretics, or Aramaic, or Arabic, or Hebrew, that's when the confusion came in, because you got away from what was really being spoken about, and it left room for interpretation. For example, if I say, you are the son of my world, what do I mean? Now, if you're a person new to the English language, you're confused. You're saying, I'm the son of the world? I'm not the son. But we in America know what you're saying is, you make me feel good. You're like the light of my day. You know, all the romantic stuff you use. You're just so, when I see you, I just melt. You understand? This is what we take it as today. When we get back to our language and get back into the feel and the emotion of it, then we remove all the spell, all those things they're using to keep us enchanted. Okay? So it's good to just study history. But remember, his story is a what? And our story is always a mystery to him. Our story, mystery, my story. Go ahead. Go ahead. And you're doing the right thing by keep questioning. That's why we're here with you. You know, that's why they sent one of their own. That's why they sent me to Affinity Atom Ray. That's why he was sent, so that we can get it all back. He came to turn back on that light inside, the true light, that pure light, that black sun they called it, that old light, that original illuminated light, and get us away from the lesser light, as the brother here was asking about earlier, that amber light and give us back that pure green light. It reflects green here. It's really violet, but when it comes through here because of your ozone layer, it's reflected as green. It appears green, that pure light. He's here to give it to us again. We have to you know, work and work with him so that we can receive. Any other questions? Um, my question is, um, how do the Luciferians and the Reptilians or uh, Chalabans or whatever you want to call them, how do they put negative thoughts in your mind? Because at one time, I listened to the tape and it said um, they can hover over your body and assimilate themselves to your brain waves. Mm -hmm. Do they, due to one specific person, or do they, is it like an overlay of Everyone. It's no, they, can, they call them walk-ins. Yeah. Because human beings, because we're only using 7% of a 52-ounce grain, they're able to manipulate that other 93%. Understood? And they watch you when you're angry. That's one way. When you're depressed, when your continence is falling, if you want to use the Bible. And they're able to manipulate your brain patterns and come in. These, these beings exist when you look at, uh, just say, music. In music you have a beat and a what? Rest. And a rest. Now, what is that space in between the beat and the rest? It must be a beat. But some people say no, because there's no sound, it's nothing. So by saying this, by them saying, or by them admitting that because there's no sound, it's nothing, then they are bearing witness that there is such a state as a state of nothingness. You see? And there are beings who use that space to manipulate this world. They use that extra time that we're not counting. That's what they operate off of. And they do exist. Yes, they do. All right, um, is there a particular, like, is it certain beings assigned to one human being? You know, because when they do this negative energy, it's not like everybody feels like, just say if I'm negative today, uh -huh. the person next to me is not. Uh -huh. So is it one being assigned to a person? That no, it's not a thing, no. It's it's not a thing of one that. being you know, assigned to you. Yeah. You can't do that to yourself, though. When you play yeah. with things like tarot cards and Ouija boards, you can't open up a vortex and have beings that come and play you. Yeah. And that can happen. And this is explained in the book, the uh, book of Urim uh, or Thummim. He explains it in there. Now, however, there are beings that they just seek 
to manipulate this world. This is their playground. Overstood? So they just go about doing devilishment. Jumping in, and that's what they tell when they talk about walkings. They just jump in and out of people, doing what they want. And we are responsible for that by opening up ourselves to those negative influences. You understand? By getting caught up in the bright lights and the colors and the music and all the things that we know are really a detriment to us. We'll say, I know that um, hip hop music or R&B uh, or the music of today is really not good for us. I know this, but I just can't help but listen to it. I mean, I know there's demons riding on those musical notes, but I can't help it. So we, we're basically saying, I know it's, you know, it's, it's going to mess me up, but I'm an addict to it, so I got to listen to it. And then we say, so how can I control my thoughts? By getting away from all those things that you know are bad for you. Now we're not saying that so you can run home today and smash all your records and your tapes and your CDs and throw them out the window and become a fanatic and two days later be right back on it. Like people do with cigarettes. I'll never smoke another cigarette again. I'll lay <laughs> Tomorrow. I'll start tomorrow. <laughs> it's being real with yourself to take it day by day and take the journey within. Address yourself. Stop pointing the finger at everybody else and start focusing on ourselves and correcting the problems that we know we got. Because each one, everybody sitting here or standing here today, we all got a little something wrong with us. Right? I mean, be honest. So instead of talking, yeah, you know what he said, you know what she said, focus on, no, I need to get myself right. I want to ask you a question about um, the seven chakras of the body, dealing with the third chakra. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can you say I said I want to ask you a question about the chakras of the body, dealing with the third chakra. Could you explain more about chakras? I mean, seats. Okay. Yeah. Um, voluntary and involuntary force. I want to know exactly what that means. You both speak because you said about the chakras, then you said voluntary and involuntary. Yeah, um, the third chakra, I think it has something to do with voluntary and involuntary force. Mm -hmm. I want to know exactly what that means. What does voluntary and involuntary force mean? Yeah. Voluntary are things that you're able to do of yourself. Involuntary things are things that the body does on its own, like your heart pumping. That's not, as we're sitting here right now, as you're standing there right now, you don't have to think to yourself, Heart keep beating, heart keep beating, heart keep beating. Your heart is, is on its own rhythm and it's beating naturally, correct? That's considered an involuntary function. Now, when you make a reference to the seats in human beings, the seats, each seat is like a socket. And in each socket sits a gland, whether it be the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the adrenal gland, etc. These are different glands that sit in these seats. Each one of these glands or seats must be aligned, mother Dutch, must be aligned and when this happens the ancients taught that when this happens your body will begin to vibrate and the pineal gland will open up like a lotus and we'll leave it there any other questions oh, I'm back. I have a question about um, beans um, I listened to the talk show and it was saying that's a perfect being a perfect being Perfect being. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a perfect being? Has there ever been a perfect, perfect being? It depends on your definition of perfect. Meaning, to, super, to the people in the modeling agencies, a perfect being is a tall, slim, long blonde hair, all burnt, all burn, little knot on the top, kick to the side, little hazel eyes, you know, slim, little tannish, little light thing going on hair parted on one side, they consider that a perfect being. Understood? Now, to, to me, or to us, a perfect being is Nietzsche Atomre. He's a perfect being. A, and it simply means a being who has been perfected. He's been perfected, and this is why he's able to answer every and all questions put before him. And that perfect being to us, whether he is to Mr. Seal, I don't even give him But to me, he's perfect. All right? And to us, he's perfect. And that perfect being is now turning others into perfect beings. All right. Okay? 
I have a question. Um, okay, you know when they say, um, like when people die, young children or whatever, in car accidents, drownings, and they'll say, well, it was just their 